From the Up Hope Coast Studios in Oklahoma City, you're watching The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. Time for five and five. Barry, five topics. Let's get right to it. Let's start with this one. OU football, back in the BCS. Really? I'm going to say no for this reason. Everybody, everybody's always worried about who lost, who's ahead, you know, how many unbeatens are left, what's going to happen in the South Carolina LSU game. Here's where I, why OU does not need to worry about the BCS. The Sooners need to worry about the Sooners. They played one good game this year. When they start putting three or four together in a row, okay, then we can talk about the BCS. Get to seven and one, eight and one, okay. But uh, until, uh, until OU takes care of business and shows that the way it played in Lubbock is the way this team can play every Saturday, uh, BCS talk is way premature. Yeah, mathematically, sure. Get back on the winning track, and that helps you in the BCS race. But, yeah, Texas Tech game to me is not – a sign that everything is fine with the Oklahoma football team. Yes, it's the right step, because if you go out there and lose Barry, the house really is on fire. But I tell you what, Texas Tech, I was not a believer in them before the season started. I'm not yet believing that Tech is a great team, and I'm not so sure that makes that a great win. Hey, what about this for OSU football, Barry? Is it headed for a quarterback controversy? J.W. Walsh sounds like he's going to start again at Kansas. Are we headed down the road to a quarterback controversy? I think we might be headed towards a quarterback controversy among the fan base and maybe the media, not within the walls of the football office. The OSU football ship has sailed. They are running Dana Holgerson's offense, and Dana Holgerson's offense is best suited for a Wes Lunt type, not a J.W. Walsh type. It's unfortunate for Walsh. He's a heck of a quarterback. He's proved he can play and play well at this level, but Wes Lunt is the kind of quarterback this offense needs Cowboys aren't changing the offense. No, and that's exactly right. J.W. Walsh was, re was recruited and signed at a time when they still thought a Zach Robinson type of guy was what they wanted. And, and there's nothing wrong with that dual threat type of quarterback. But I think we saw with Zach Robinson and the way he came through that senior season, so banged up, so battered. I think that's part of the equation for Oklahoma State. Yeah, they want to throw it around and J.W. Walsh doesn't have that arm strength, but I also think they want a quarterback that when the end of the year comes, he's still standing on both feet and healthy. I think that's important for these guys too. All right, Barry, Thunder. The season is about to start. Preseason kicks off this week. What's the biggest concern about this team, besides the James Harden re-signing contract? What's the biggest concern for these guys? I think it's just health. I mean, the Thunder's going to have a fabulous year. I think they're going to be the number one seed in the West. Uh, the Thunder has entered a new, sort of a new dynamic, whereas you don't really worry about the, uh, the regular season. As fans, as media, who are, even as players, you just enjoy it. Yeah. You don't worry about it. Um, so uh, I, think, I think the Thunder just – health is about the only thing that can derail this team until they get to, say, the second, third round of the playoffs, run into the Spurs, run into the Lakers. They're going to have to produce the way they did last year. It's going to be tougher than ever with the Lakers uh, rebuilt, but uh, the Thunder is built for a championship. So um, I, I really don't see many concerns until the playoffs. My biggest concern with these guys is backup center. You obviously know who your starting guy is. It's Kendrick Perkins. But they've got a bunch of guys, but no proven guy. There's a lot of talk about Cole Aldris getting ready to, to take his minutes and be that backup guy. I didn't see it in the summer league. Maybe he's ready to turn it on in the season, but I didn't see it. They bring in Hashim Thabit. They bring in Daniel Orton. Maybe one of those guys can turn it on and be that guy. But we're going to get to see a lot of these guys because Perk is not going to be healthy for the preseason. I think that's a real issue. What do they have at center? Are they going to have to piecemeal it with that second wave uh, with some other guys? I think that remains to be seen because I'm not sure any of those guys are really ready for that prime time time with the second unit. All right, our fun question of the week, Barry. Our high school guys did a main event on Monday looking at the best high school uniforms. So what's your favorite uniform in sports? Well, my favorite, uh, it, it's got to be football because I think football's uh, uniforms sort of supersede the other two sports. Uh, and I'm going to go with the New York football giants on the road. Now, I love, I love Michigan. I love the helmets. I love the color scheme at uh, the, maize and, the maize and blue. But I love the New York football giants when they're wearing the, uh, when they're wearing the white with the gray pants and the striping, the red, the, the red trim. It's just a wonderful look. And it's a tough crowd because about two-thirds of the teams in the NFL have fabulous uniforms. 
the Jets, who they share the stadium with, the Jets at home or road, the white and green's great, but I'll take the Giants. Yeah, I have to go with football too, but I'm going to go with Alabama. And I know that's in a state where you're competing with the SEC and right now the, the Crimson Tide. Alabama in those traditional uniforms. I think traditional football uniforms in college football, Barry, are, are among my favorites. You know, you talk about Michigan, you talk about, uh, you know, USC, which has had that same look, Penn State. Penn State, frankly, Barry, gets a nod from me, uh, at least towards the top of the list this year, because they decided to put the names on the back for the first time because those were the guys that stayed. I thought that was a classy move by Bill O'Brien. All right, lastly, Barry, we got in strong with OU Texas. Who's going to be the better quarterback on Saturday in this game? I think it's going to be Landry Jones for two reasons. One, we talked about Landry's inconsistency, but the truth is when Landry throws out a clunker, he doesn't usually come back all that soon with another clunker. He generally plays pretty well for an extended time after that. I think he's going to play well Saturday. I think OU's ability to run on Texas is going to help Landry. And second of all, I think Mike Stoops is going to dial up enough blitzes to really get to David Ash. I didn't get to watch a lot of the West Virginia-Texas game, but OSU let Ash be comfortable in the pocket. Let him sort of stay back there and, and find his men. Mike Stoops isn't going to do that. Mike Stoops is going to bring the house. Yeah, no doubt about it. David Ash is going to have to play probably his best game of his career if he wants – to lead the Longhorns to victory and if he wants to be considered the better quarterback. But I like his demeanor. I got to see him firsthand in that game at Oklahoma State. And Barry, you're right, they didn't pressure him that much. But I think he's more than a caretaker quarterback, which is what we kind of thought with the running game. You know, he was going to be the guy that just had to get the snap and hand it off to the running backs, and that was basically going to be his role. He can make plays. He can make throws. He's shown that he, you know, can throw the short stuff. He can throw the long stuff. He's making better decisions. I don't know if he'll be the better quarterback on Saturday, but I think it could be a toss-up. And if Landry Jones starts to head down the road of uh, bad play that we've seen him from time to time, I think David Ash could step up and play pretty well on Saturday. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.